Oh, he just walked in. <laughs> My man, what up, baby? So, what's up? Chilling, brother. What's going on? Chilling, right. chilling. Yes, sir. Long, you got it. Hey, dude, chillin long, long as hell, man. Hey, yeah. Chick, yeah. can you backflip? You think I could backflip at 40 years now, old? How could you ever backflip? Oh, yeah. I was a little athletic motherfucker now. When you started backflipping? Yeah. Shit, about 10, 11. Could you, Fred? Nah, I was garbage. That's right. And it broke my neck. Yeah. Uh, Y'all come back from the hospital. Doing Even it. off the park bench? You yeah, could like, backflip off the no, park I could, bench? I could, I could, like, how he could backflip off the ground. Like, I couldn't do that. Like, we had a homeboy, we called him Kill Switch. Yeah. Kill Switch just take all running. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you and know what flip. I mean? It was all, it was all like hood gymnastics. Kill Switch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. killing it. <laughs> <laughs> the part. Do you ever have like the uh, the mattresses in the dump? Like trampolines. The mattress next to the dump, so I got on the mattress, tried to do the backflip. I flipped my ass off the mattress into the trash pile. <laughs> Something stuck in my back and was infl uh, infected. Swelled wow. up my back, was f***ed up for like two weeks. Really? I had to drain some shit out of there. I was, was never awesome. tried to do it again. Damn, oh, I yeah. thought everybody could flip. Yeah, I started know. flipping in my teenage years. Teenage. Yeah, a, d a dude named James Green. Still, me and him still cool to this day. Really? We had a ditch. And then the ditch had, would fill up with water, but it, it goes down like a slope. And he said, just go backwards and, you know what I mean, let it carry you. And that, that's how I learned. And Hell then once I learned from there, we started flipping on concrete. I mm -hmm. used to be so scared. Because the first time, you know how you start? Like, I started where they put your hand in your, like, your foot, your homeboy hand. Toss you up. Yeah. And they toss. I was like, okay, I got it, I got it. Homeboy Eric. Eric used to be killing. I was like, I got it. <laughs> Bam! All right, coach, I'm good. <laughs> in the South, everybody, yeah. if you couldn't flip, you couldn't even play no sports. You weren't allowed on the team if you were, if you was fat, you ain't had to flip. But if you was thin, you had to be able to flip. They didn't even respect you. Nah, they ain't care all the ways about that. You can be Fred, fast. You from Bay? You the only from Bell Glade can't flip. Probably. That's that probably might true. Be true. Cause come on now, That's you talking about? True. Listen to your story in the trash pile. Y'all used to play because in the like, mother. Something dump. about my big ass head, right? I couldn't get the right momentum. <laughs> I was scared niggas. to throw myself back, and I just couldn't get. I can do the front flip. Y'all play. I was a front flip demon off the high board. Harder, that's harder than back flipping, though. It is. But like off the diving board and stuff, mm -hmm. I can do that. The board. joint Chris Brown can do is crazy, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Running right. forward and yeah. back flip? Yeah, yeah. He, what Chris Brown weigh? About 107? Nah, Chris Brown almost your height. But he's thin. Nah, he's a big dude. He ain't little, man. And he's tall, too, so yeah. he's athletic. Yeah. My bad. I always forget when other Super Bowl champions sit down with us, <sighs> and I'm talking about, like, the things that happen when you win Super Bowls and all that, that you guys never been to one, and so y'all don't really know what we're talking about. Oh, that's man. true. And it's, it's been a while since fraternity. we talked about that, man. That is, that is true. We were training at Bummeritos, and they would always talk about, man, we got this kid out of USF. That's a dog. So he pull up, and I'm looking at him. He's just naturally raw, pause, right? And uh, <laughs> like, he's training, and you can see the athleticism and the hard work. I'm like, damn, USF? Why ain't, you know what I'm saying? Why ain't Then he get in the league and terrorize everything. I remember that. They were doing it. I ain't know nothing about no football. <laughs> They talking yeah. about, they talking Florida stuff. No, nah, USF. USF. A couple Bama. weeks ago, they almost beat Bama. Yeah, that's because Nick was trying some old bull dookie, though. Nah, I don't he, know. No, Nick knew that the that Milrose should have been starting, and he played them other two boys, and USF was hitting them in the mouth on defense. They was hitting them. It was. And he got what he deserved, because he knew good and dang well that boy. Said, I wanted y'all to beat him. Mm-hmm. I, want, I, I did. And now I'm mad, Chan, so you start the show because <laughs> Nick was out there foul, your coach. <laughs> oh, my man, I, I fool with Nick Saban. Nick Saban drafted me. Nick Saban yeah. made me rich. Oh, what's up? Yeah, yeah. Well, first, now, every time we come to Miami, y'all, you know, we're in condos and we're in penthouses. But today, my man Victor DeMesman of the DeMesman and Dover Empire, he let us use the facilities right here, and, man, they doing things down here big time. Right now, the building we in, bro, the Mesman, Victor Mesman, Jeremy Dover, the Mesman and Dover. The first floor is the law office. They both attorneys. The third floor is White Cloud Media, which is they they represent me. I am a client. I am a representative it's of White Cloud. And unfortunate the, for them. We're on the fourth floor, and it's all in media group. Mm -hmm. All in management group, sorry. And that is their sports agency. And right now, man, Vic, Vic's a friend of mine. 
He's down here three years down in South Florida. He's making big waves right now, man. So just just big ups to him, and we appreciate you, Vic. We appreciate you, Jeremy, for letting us use y'all facilities, man. But, yeah, they're doing sure. big things in South Florida. White Cloud, right? White Cloud Media? Yeah. They ain't say nothing about those white pants and your dirty drawers. Like, how does that work? <laughs> What happens? I change my drawers when I wear white pants. <laughs> you don't flip them. What's that? No, I don't flip them. I change them, and then I don't eat no. Uh, I don't eat a lot the day before, <laughs> so I don't got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> anyway, if he, and then he <laughs> whatever. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, JPP, man, welcome to the show. Appreciate uh, it. Excited to have you. Freddie T. Chan, I'm RC. This is the pivot. Um, Jason, I kind of just want to get right to it, bro. Uh, Manny Martin walks past the skinny kid on the basketball court who thought he was a hooper, mm -hmm. at least at the time. Hey, man, you should come play football. Coach Menace. Coach Menace. Ah, coach Menace. Got you. Was the head coach there. Manny Martin was D his assistant, okay. D coordinator. Yep. That was there. But Manny Martin had more to do with me. Then Coach Menace. You know what I mean? Coach Menace was the head coach, and he the one that dragged me to the football field. Who was the coach of the geometry class? Coach Martin. Coach Martin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he had me in his class <laughs> after, after I got on the football team. Yeah. yeah. So when, you know, you think you, you think you, okay, you are a basketball player, mm -hmm. and, you know, you're taller, uh, athletic, rangy. What was it about football, though, that finally drew you to it to get you on the field and start your career? Like you said, I was a basketball player. I love basketball. I remember me watching in the stands, and you know, I seen the guys hit, and I was like, "Ooh, they hitting too hard." Like <laughs> that ain't that ain't my sport. But then once they dragged me out there, and they told me, "Yo, get the quarterback," and they told me, they explained to me what do I need, to, what I need to do, just run around the office of um, lineman, and that's when Big Mike. Uh, who was one of the star key players there. I got around him. He played um, two-way, both sides of the ball. I got around him, and at that point, they was like, how did you get in this gap? And, you know, I just said, I just pushed and pulled him. I had this one move, just push, pull, and it worked to my advantage. You know, nobody could stop it. And then that's how I became part of the game. I loved the game. And that was basically it for me. I just that push, pull move, and... Then they started explaining to me how to, you know, organize football work, and, and I started to pick it up, and that's how I became a fan of the game. When you say you want to go back, go back further than that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you look into it, your upbringing, you know, of Haitian descent. Yeah, my mom and dad. Yeah, yep. Haitian descent. They ain't much football played in They ain't care about too much about football. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But now they do, though. They'll yeah. tell me, you know what I mean, what, what I'm doing wrong, yeah. you know, on the, on the football field, you know, how the other players doing wrong, but they ain't know a lot of – Dang thing in football. What was your upbringing like? You dying so in Florida? So basically, you know, my dad been blind since I was born. You know what I mean? He actually went blind since I was born. That's 34 years. I'm 34 years old. So 34 years that he haven't even seen me. Uh, my mom, she had to stop everything she was doing. You know what I mean? Being a, a housewife and had to go in and find a job and like, you know, a nurse, a, a nursing home job to feed the family. So she was barely home and stuff. So. Basically, it was just me, my brother, my sister at the time just going to school and my dad stayed home. Even though he's blind and stuff, you know, blind people can do a lot, you know what I'm saying? So he was cooking, cleaning the house, you know what I mean? Stuff that he normally do that people won't, won't even notice, you know what I'm saying? Because they think once you're blind, you're just blind, you lose all your senses. But in reality, yeah, he taught me a lot to this day, you know what I'm saying? So is my mother. So it was hard, but at the end of the day, like, you know, we ain't make no excuses. It's, you know, God gives you what he gives you, and you got to take it and roll with it. You know what I'm saying? What were some of the family traditions or cultural values that you've taken with you throughout your career, you know, in your journey to the NFL and everything you've done in life? Me coming up, I never see my mom and dad actually complain at once. You know what I'm saying? They always do, do, do. So, you know, I always do, do, do as well. So I took that and ran with it, you know? No matter how the situation is going, I just, I just do, you know? And that's what my mom and dad did. And um, I'll say this, that, you know, with my, with my father, 
you know, just seeing him and how the way he handled things made it totally different for me. You know, y'all know my situation that happened with 4th of July. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it totally switched from me seeing what he was doing and seeing how he handled things. And it made me realize that, you know what, life ain't that bad because, you know, anything that happened to you in a given moment, you could, you could just, you could adjust to it. And then, so it basically made me adjust to life, you know what I mean? Adjust to the real world, because no matter what, in life, things always gonna keep going, no matter what, you know what I mean? I realized that, you know, nine years ago, you know what I'm saying, so. So with your father, you know, having, having had the opportunity to ever see you play, mm -hmm. you know, you've seen the challenges that he had gone through, um, but you also have a, I guess, a don't quit no mindset. Yeah. July 4th, 2015. Since the birthday. Right, mm -hmm. 2015, when the accident happened. Mm -hmm. uh, detonated a firework and the hand injury happened. What was what's the first thing that crossed your mind? Shit. I was with my whole family. Not my whole family, but the people I surround myself with, good people. And uh, this is something that, you know, I did, you know, since a teenager. You know what I mean? Gather the hood, mm -hmm. gather the kids around, you know, food, drinks, whatever, and just have a great time. And then, like, like I said, it's my sister's birthday, 4th of July, you know what I'm saying? So we having a good time, and next thing you know, it was like the end of the night, you know, like I said before, in a couple of my interviews, and next thing you know, it was a couple uh, of fireworks left. I was like, man, you know, I'm done, I'm tired. And then I said, you know what, they was like, light some more. You know, and I lit the last, like, maybe, like, I'll say it was, like, four more left, and I lit the last of the four more, and then that's thing, you know, boom. At that point, it was like, you know, I only supposed to be sitting here right now with y'all boys. You know what I'm saying? At this point, I only supposed to be sitting here. So at that point, the firework was up to my face. It felt like the wind, every time I tried to light it up, the wind was blowing it out. So I got down to, like, my waist side, you know? And then that's when I was like, I'm gonna get this to light up, you know? And, you know, spark the match, and that's you know, the lighter, and then it stayed on for a little bit, and I, whatever it is, a stem, the green stem, it was about this long. The green stem was about this long. And then that's thing you know, I touched it, and it just blew up right in there. Mm. So from right there, you know, thank God it had it could have went totally different Correct. from how it went. Cause yeah. you got kids around, you got my little sister around, but she was in the house at the time. You know, you got my son mother who I was with at the time. Everybody just around. So at that point, it was just a I remember like it was just a big green light. You know what I'm saying? Like you couldn't see nothing. So basically, you know how uh uh, uh what I'm saying they use in the um in the army where they throw them? Flash bombs. There you go. So it looked at just like that. So I had to make sure everything, as soon as the, the, the explosion happened, I jumped away from the explosion. Yeah. So I jumped on the ground. And I said, you know, I'm waiting for the green light to go. Once the green light came back, it, it disappeared, and I started to see my vision back. You got my son, mother, just screaming, going crazy. And then that's thing, you know, I'm like, yo, what the F is your problem? Like, you know? Like you said, what was going through my mind? And he said, your hand, your hand. So I looked at my hand, and the only thing I said was, oh, shit, I got to get to the hospital. You know what I mean? Not knowing that, you know what I'm saying, yo, my, my fingers, everything was still intact at the time. It just, you can see the flesh, the bones, everything. So I'm still thinking normal. So I'm about to get in the car and drive to the hospital. So I'm opening the door with my right hand because I'm right-handed. Opening the door with my right hand, putting blood all. Then my friend just said, no, I drive. The hospital, like 15, 10 minutes away, we got there in five minutes. Five minutes, yo. No bra hospital. And I remember to this day, one of my friends, I'm in the league already, so one of my friends who I went to school with uh, saw me, you know, and then tweeted it out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's when Twitter was big. Tweeted it out, and then that's, you know, it just went all over the internet. And then... Uh, he asked me what's wrong, the, uh, and I was like, man, my hand, because I had it wrapped up. So next thing you know, I just said, you know what, in order for me to get in the bathroom, I'm going to have to do something crazy. You know, so I just started splashing the blood everywhere. And then they took me in the bathroom, and I remember I told them, look, no matter what, don't cut off my hand. Mm -hmm. You know, give me the option. You know, and then I passed out from there. Wow. 
for you, having watched your father still be able to maintain a lifestyle, still be able to contribute to your family, to your home, even though he had been blind your entire life, mm -hmm. that has to teach you something. It tells you no shortcuts mm -hmm. in life. For sure. And it allows you to recognize when other people take them. For you, when we get hurt, man, or when there's something with us, it is our careers that are involved. You know, at this point, man, you five years deep. Yeah. You know, you're a Super Bowl champion. You're a pro bowler, an all pro. You have all of these things going for you. And, you know, Fred asked what you were thinking. And then you, you're like, you know, well, here's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to get this done. I'm trying to get that done. Once you realize you're going to lose fingers or you have lost fingers, mm -hmm. what was going through your mind to say, I could still come back and be the JPP that was always making the plays that he did before this accident? You know, to be honest, football wasn't even on my mind at the time. It was more mostly like, okay, I'm losing a lot of blood. Mm -hmm. So am I going to survive this or not? You know, everybody going crazy, mm -hmm. you know, doing their thing, you know, real close friends in the hospital because, you know, they ain't that far. So it, football was not on my mind. Football was on a couple of people's mind in the hospital. You know, is he going to lose his career? But my main thing was like, okay, am I going to see my son again? Mm -hmm. You know, am I going to see my family again? So that wasn't even on my mind. But once, you know, I transferred to Miami Day Jackson Memorial Hospital and we did a couple of surgeries and I woke up from, you know, the coma, whatever it was, from that nap, anesthesia, whatever it was. The third day, then I seen it all on TV. That's when I was like, okay, you know, the world is going crazy right now. You know, this ain't even nothing compared to what my father been through. Yeah. You know, something that happened naturally, a natural cause, you know what I mean? This happened to me because I put myself in this situation. You know what I'm saying? Brother crying in the thing, I say, look, at the end of the day, you gotta be the man of the house right now. Not me, because I'm in this hospital. But once I figured it out, I was like, you know what? Got my weight up, we was talking, me and Fred was talking. Mike, you know, mm -hmm. to this day, he's my trainer. Right. You know, it was 14 years in. I remember Mike coming to the hospital, and that was, that was my franchise year. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With the Giants. I never had a, a contract on the line, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I never signed it. But that was my franchise year and uh, messed it all up. Right. Yeah. So from there, I was like, okay. Mike came into the thing. He was like, listen, man, you trained this whole offseason. And he's seen the difference in from when I came in and training. And he's like, this, your, this is your year. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I messed that all up. So you know what he did? He came to the hospital every day and made me walk 15 flights of stairs, up and down. Lost a lot of weight, probably like 40 pounds. I was like 220 something. But he did that every day because he knew, you know, at the end of the day, he believed in me. I believed in myself. You know what I'm saying? I did what it needed to take to do. So after that, I was like, man, in order for me to play football, I can't ask for help. Mm. So therefore, you know, I'm missing fingers. So what's the first thing you got to do in football? You got to dress yourself in pads. You got to learn how to tie your shoe. Who going to tie your shoe for you? Yeah. So I said, you know what? If I could tie my shoe without no help, I'm going to be good. <laughs> and sure enough, I tied that shoe, and I was like, I'm going to be good because now I don't need nobody to help me right. tie my shoe if I'm on the field running right. and my shoe chains get tangled up or they get loose. And you know how many times y'all have been on the field? Y'all have been yeah. on the field. Y'all have to tie our shoe yeah. a quick tie, you know? So once I learned that, it was like, okay, I did that. And then, you know, I was writing with my left hand at the time. I was like, you know what? I ain't even left-handed. I can still try to write with my right hand, you know? They say it wasn't impossible, but I did it. You know, and still, my signature or nothing has not changed. So I wound up still writing with my right hand, still tying my shoe. So from there, it was like, it was a wrap. The only thing I couldn't do was buckle up. Show the pads? Nah, my church shirts, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, hey, you know you're a Florida boy. Hey, hey, church shirt. Church shirt. That's the only thing I couldn't do. My hey, shirt. Like, you know it's the saying? only place you can wear it, though. <laughs> you know, you know, my church shirt. Church so I was shirt. like, that's the only thing I couldn't do. But at that point, I was like, that's not even a big deal. You know what yeah. I mean? The hardest part is over with, you know? So once I learned how to do those things, I knew that I'll be, I'll right. be good. How did you get to the point of simplifying tasks? in that way. 
you know, I think sometimes we always think so big picture. Mm -hmm. You know, like I know my mind would have been like, I played DB. It would have been like, can I break up the football? Can I catch the football? Can I do all of these things? And for you, it became as simple as how do I tie my shoe, mm -hmm. right? And if I can tie my shoe, I can do certain things. Okay, now my signature. How are you able in your mind to minimize such a big deal? such a huge thing mm -hmm. to small task like that to allow yourself to feel like, okay, this is going to be okay. I can get to a point where I can get back to who I was. It goes all back to my father, man. I never seen him complain about anything. Like, even to this day, like, he's good. You know, he do the same thing every day. You know, sit in bed, listen to the radio, smile and, and laugh and talk to my mother. You know, that's, that's life for him. So... With me, it was just, yo, I'm still alive, you know? I still got my vision, mm. you know what I'm saying? Now, if I would've lost my vision, you know, then it's something crazy. Because at the end of the day, well, that's something I was born with, like my dad was born with, but accident, that trauma accident took it away. Mm -hmm. Not because of health-wise, you know what I mean? Glaucoma, Yeah. you know what I mean? So. It was basically that, man. I just revert back to my dad, man. And that's basically what it was. As you're talking about it and, and laying it out, because I told my ACL four mm -hmm. times. And it was about that third time where, like, I was sitting and I felt sorry for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm asking God why you do this to me. I'm thinking, I'm, you know, I'm at that point, I'm in high school. So at that point, I got yeah. college scholarships and I'm like, you done messed this up. Like, I'm, you know, everybody has aspirations to go to the NFL. Right. There wasn't one time through that whole ordeal nah. that you ever questioned yourself. You ain't had nah, no I, moment of weakness or nothing. Anybody that know me, I never said, you know what, am I going to be able to play football? Because football wasn't on my mind. Only thing that was on my mind was, yo, I'm still alive. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Laying up in that hospital, yo, Little kids passed away from firework injury. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just me now. I'm just, you know, known because I'm JPP. I won a Super Bowl from the New York Giants. The media is crazy in New York. Right. Like, all oh, that is, that's crazy. But not one time I question, you know, God or anything. I just say, you know what, whatever he gives me, I can handle. You know what I mean? And that's how I went about everything. But don't get me wrong, it changed my, totally, it totally changed my career. Yeah. You know what I mean? It totally changed my career from how I was doing things to how I got to adjust now. I play both sides of the ball. So I don't put my right hand down no more. Mm -hmm. I put my left hand down on both sides of the ball. Mm -hmm. So it's just small things I had to adjust, but I never questioned myself, like, I, can I do this? Because once I got through this, football was easy for me. Yeah, It's like, yo... You know, ACL, don't get me wrong, ACL, uh, I had a shoulder injury, uh, you know, broken neck after the, my fight work. Wreck, and that's, yeah. that's something, you know, I was just driving, doing 65 on the way home, you know, on the way to Miami with my friend, trying to go see my friend Tracy. She's in here right now. Just driving, normal driving, 65. That's nothing compared to everybody's in here. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? You know, I just had to go, I just had to go caught that new Ferrari. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, and it's raining outside. Yo, now I know now I would never ever drive a sports car while it's raining. You know, I would never drive a sports car when it's raining. Even if it got a wet mode on it, because I had it in wet mode, you know. But I would never drive a sports car when it's raining because I know it don't take that much. You know, it just take a quick second to hydroplane. You know, and while we was hydroplaning, me and my friend was in the car. We didn't have our seatbelts on. You know, yo, that's lesson learned, you know, well seat built and yo, God was protecting me. It ain't my time, you know, bam, broke my neck, mm. broke my neck. Didn't know I had a broken neck. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm over here. My fan face all messed up, hit the dashboard. He's in total shock because he never had nothing to, you know, a trauma situation like that in yeah. his life. So he's in the car while we still in the fast lane. And, yo, we got to get out because if another car come here, we might be dead. So I got to get him out the car, snatch him up out the car. This all adrenaline because I play football and all that. So snatch him out the car, put him on the side, call 911. To this day, it's on, it's on the Internet. You can hear the call and all. Yo, told him what we was doing, where we was at. They came ambulance, hopped in the car. I told the state trooper, do I got to stay here? Or, you know, at this time, you know, my adrenaline's still kicking. 
All right. No, you don't have to stay here. Signed the paperwork. Hopped in the hopped in the car with my friend with his whole face messed up. You know. Drive to the ambulance, yo. I say, you know what? It's been a long night. You know, this was it was probably like 11, 1 o'clock, whatever, whatever time it was. Sat down, laid there for a little bit. You know, so I decided to lay down in the ambulance. Mm -hmm. You know how the ambulance is, or whatever. Got to the ambulance. My friend on the stretcher. You know, my cousin was. He met me at the ambulance, and then when they opened the door, they say, Jason. My cousin said, Jason, let's go. Yo, I try to get up. Couldn't move. Dang. Having a broken neck is, as a baby, you know, I got a four month old at home. You know, I'm pretty sure y'all got kids. Yeah. So, you know, you got to hold that neck up, mm -hmm. you know, till they can be able to hold their neck up. So, having a broken neck is like, you know, it feels loose and you can't control your body. That's how it felt to me. And everything was heavy from here down. Dang. Everything was heavy. I ain't paralyzed now, mm -hmm. just broken neck. You know, and I didn't know that until I got up and my cousin, we was walking down the highway, but as I'm taking each and every step, my body getting heavier and heavier. You know what I'm saying? Then I get to the room and the lady said, let's go take an MRI because I told her how I was feeling. She come back rushing. Ah, don't move. You got a broken neck. I'm like, yo, how can I have a broken neck? I should be dead if you got a broken neck. You should be paralyzed or something. And she put the thing on me. And next thing you know, they said it was confirmed I had a broken neck, you know? And the way that happened, you just don't know how things are happening in life, you know? And the way that happened, for me to do what I did after that, I never miss a season now. Uh -huh. You know, like I said, if, I could, if I'm able to handle it, I'm gonna handle it. I never missed a season at all. But I was, cap I was capable enough to handle it, come back week eight and still do what I do. But most guys was like, yo, you had a broken neck. How are you still playing football? I don't even play football no more. You know, just like the, the guy that from Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, and then I was on Tampa Bay at this time. But mm -hmm. when, I, when I blew off my hand, it was a guy that on Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a DB, I don't know his name, mm -hmm. but he wound up quitting and didn't play because as a DB, you still need to catch the ball or whatever. But if it was me, I still would play, you know what I mean? Because when you love something, you're going to do it regardless. You know what I'm saying? And can't nobody tell you to stop it. JPP, man, you explaining the firework accident mm -hmm. and then now talking about your accident the night you broke your neck, like, it feels like those things should have been worse. Yeah. Right? It feels like there could have been different outcomes to that. You know, Chan mentioned questioning God mm -hmm. and saying, like, why me? Why would this happen? What did I do? Does this change my life? Do you ever sit back and think about how lucky you actually are, how blessed, blessed. you I'm, are? I'm yeah. lucky in my category. You're blessed. You, think, you ever sit back and think about how blessed you are that God has brought you through those things? For and sure. how We all do things in life that, you know what I mean, you know, whether it's, you know, trying to create a podcast or try, try, trying to create a business and, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, elevate yourself in life and elevate people that's around you, you know? And sometimes you totally forget about your past. Like, I don't think about my missing fingers at all. You know, it's just a part of me now. You know, I don't think about, oh, I had a broken neck. It just, that's a part of me now. You know, I didn't have to have surgery. You know, I was blessed I didn't have to have surgery. You know, so all that thing, sometimes you forget, but then when you sit down and, you know what I mean, and start thinking about, like, you know, what you done been through in life that, you know, people haven't, some people haven't. Because some people, you know, it's different for people. You know, some people catch cancer. You know, hopefully they can beat it. Like, that's not my situation. My situation was totally different. So when I look at my life and see what I've been through, I'm like, you know what, I'm blessed yeah. just to be here. And just to be talking to y'all, just to be talking to my friends, because things can be totally different. Yeah. I look at it like, yo, every day is a day for you to be better and just to be blessed and, and try to and be happy because I ain't got time to be, you know, holding grudges or not being happy because, yo, you can be gone tomorrow, man. You know, like that's why I love the game of football. Mm -hmm. And, yo, football is just a plus for me. I done won two championships. Uh -huh. Two. First one, part, I did part of it, you know what I mean? Second one, I did too. And, you know, what, what makes the second one great about is we had a team full of superstars. 
Mm-hmm. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, yeah, Tom Brady, mm-hmm. you had Antonio Brown, you had the N- Dominic and Sue, mm-hmm. you had uh, yes. Shaq, you had all of that. We had a, Leonard Fournette, we had a team full of superstars. And every year you get a, a Pro Bowl vote. You know, guys, you know how it go. Yeah, I don't yeah, really yeah, care yeah, about yeah. that. You know, I, I don't realize, yo, know, all that is, it's okay, but in reality is if you work hard, mm-hmm. everybody's going to see you. You know what I'm saying? And you'll stand out. But what made it so special about that year, like when we was doing the Pro Bowl votes, I was like, man, don't get me wrong. I was like, man, fuck a Pro Bowl, man. I'm trying to get to the Super Bowl, and I feel it. And that, that whole year, I was saying, you can ask the boys that was on that team. The whole year, I'm like, yo, I feel it. We're going to be in that stadium. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sure enough, Pro Bowl came around. Everybody vote. I ain't even vote because I don't care about the Pro Bowl. But guess who was the only Pro Bowl on that team that year on that Super Bowl team? You. Yeah. And people tend to forget that. Yeah. And I forget it sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But that just goes by hard work. Like I said, I don't even supposed to be here talking to y'all boys, but hard work pays off, dog. You know what I'm saying? And you don't need no vote. You don't need anything in life but to just to work hard and let people see you. And bro, people I got to ask you. you. Like, we talk about regular injuries. I brought our knee injuries and all. They talk about the shoulder. Mm-hmm. Those are all precedented injuries from the league. They mm-hmm. know you come back, like, the Cybex test. I know yeah. you done did the yeah, Cybex did, shit yeah. and all that. When you uh, had your thing with your hand, what did you have to prove to the teams when you went and did the free agency shit? Because that's a whole different world that they you have know, to figure the out. The Giants, I was already ready. Mm-hmm. You know, like I say, Mike came to the hotel. I'm not the hotel, but Mike came to the to the hospital. We was, we, was, we was walking 15 flights of stairs up, coming down, up, coming down three times a day. That was hard for me, you know what I mean? So once we did that, it was like, okay. Once I got out of the hospital, we went right back into training, you know? And not once, he was like, man, take a break. He was like, we get right back into training. We don't care what you... So we got right back into training. What I noticed was that Mike didn't let up, so I didn't let up. Mm. You know, I didn't let up. But one thing I know, the Giants was like, you know, he ain't ready. But at the end of the day, it's all business. Mm. You cannot, can't nobody tell you when you're ready or accept yourself when you're ready. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like somebody in front of you, you you, you second string, but you waiting for the first string to something happen or, you know, to prove yourself that I could be a first string person, you know? But Giants was like, Jason, you're not ready, you know? And I remember me walking in there, I was two, I'm from 220 something, 225, to get myself to 245, that's hard. Right. You know what I mean, after a big explosion, and my hand was super big, like you said, the hips or whatever, yeah. it was huge. I was like, yo, this ain't never going down, right. but I'm working with it. But the lady was like, don't worry, trauma does go down, mm-hmm. and you'll see. I walked into the Giants facility, met with the owners and the GM. I was like, I'm ready to play. They sent me home, was like, nah, you're not ready, you know. Come back, you know, a couple more weeks, and we'll see. Cool. All right. But at that point, I was already lifting 225s. That was a point I had to prove, too, because in order to hold a bench, you have to hold it Mm -hmm. and bench. The hardest thing for me was not even benching. It was holding on to something, mm-hmm. you know, because they, they wanted me to prove that I could hold on to something without letting go. You know, first time I tried to hold on, you know, this hand scrum, but this ain't, so I'm turning like this, you can see. Right. But then over time, I got myself to that point I could hold on. That's when I knew, okay, you know, they want to see me hold on. Your to game is ready. grabbing too, though. There you That's go. That's your game. That's my game. So yeah. I had to adjust so much ways right. into football, which I did. You know, I don't complain. Like I said, I don't complain about things or whatever. I just go do it. And then to this day, I still do the same thing. Wow. With all the injuries and especially this non-football injury in the neck, but especially with this, it made me realize, yo, that I'm capable of doing anything. Mm-hmm. Anybody's capable of doing anything they put their mind to. You just gotta believe in yourself. With your story, <laughs> great story of perseverance, um, real inspiring. You know, we we talked about the Haitian community. We talked about your your uh, your parents mm-hmm. being tough and not quitting. Your charity work. How have you used your story to inspire those that are, you know, I guess less fortunate? Mm-hmm. What's the goal? 
I'll tell you this, I'm not really into social media like that, you know, and if you look on my page, there's nothing on there, you know, but people say, hey, I need to, you know, post more, blah, blah, blah. But yo, I get so much in my DM, meaning kids, you know what I mean? Grown men, every 4th of July, hitting me up. And I don't have to do much because if you know me and you know about a story, first person they're gonna think about is Jason Pierre Paul. He did it, you can do it. And I get guys, females, whatever, asking me, yo, can you talk to my son? Because he just lost his fingers wow. in a motorcycle accident. Or, you know, a shark bit off half my husband hand. Can you talk to these are random stuff I'm getting. I don't have to answer these people. In reality is I feel like I'm a regular guy. You know, but I don't went through it without no guidance. So me going through it without no guidance, I know how to help people. So you know what? I click on Accept, you know, even though I know they're probably gonna keep on writing me. <laughs> All right. So I hear the self, and you know what? That's what God telling me to do. You know, just go out your way. You know, it ain't gotta be nothing. You're not getting nothing in return, but in reality is you getting more in return because you helping somebody out that you know what I mean might commit suicide. You know what I'm saying? Might do something else in their life because they don't know what. They don't have that guidance. So I try to guide people by, hey, man, it's going to be OK. People, mom, hitting me, OK, you talk to my son. Because at the end of the day, yo, I'm a father of three. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact if something happened to my kids, God wanted nothing ever happened to my kids like I, that I went through, you going to, you, your kids not going to listen to you. Right. They looking for another lead weight. Right. You know, you're just my parent. You don't know nothing. And bro, you bring up the kids. You say you got a four month old. Mm -hmm. So you making babies still? <laughs> I got to that off. Yeah. I gotta know. For sure. Did, did the hand change any any position? No. <laughs> can can you still grab I the ankle? You can still grab. I can do everything. <laughs> I can flip whatever you want to do. <laughs> hey, only for you would ask this man about that no part, bro. Why you know? Yeah, for hey. real. <laughs> Hey. Hey. You'll yeah. be amazed. <laughs> I don't want to be amazed. Yeah. <laughs> JPP, yeah. man, you know, speaking of your father, because you continue to reference him, he finally got to go to a game. Oh, yeah. What was that moment like knowing that he'd be in the stadium? I saw you said, you know, you didn't know how he would react, react to the sounds or react yeah. to the crowd and all of First those things. Because when you do lose your sight, mm -hmm. your other senses have to heighten in order for you to be able to for live. Sure. So what was that moment like, though, knowing that he'd get an opportunity to be in the stadium for your Super Bowl, and that was his first time getting that chance? You know what? I ain't gonna lie, I was, was kind of nervous, you know, because he stays in the house, listens to his radio, and he never goes out to, like, like an event or anything that you're gonna hear that type of noise, but they gave him the what noise cancellation, headphones. headphones, and then within that noise cancellation, I don't know if this was the first time ever in Super Bowl, I don't know, but within the noise cancellation, like uh, headphones, it had um, a Haitian translator wow. translating to him exactly what I was doing on the field. And that was a very special moment because as a, as a father, you're like, you know what, I'm proud of my son, even though you can't see what's going on, but you know your son is one of the starters out there making a big difference, you know what I mean, on the field. You know, and I was proud of that moment. But then as the second Super Bowl came around, my my son was, you know, small in the first one, but as the second Super Bowl came around, it meant more to me because my dad, right, you know what he told me? He said, son, I'm proud of you. I don't care about if I die tomorrow. Mm. And then my second Super Bowl, I'm like, Dad, let's go. You know what he said? He said, I don't need to go because I enjoyed the first one. Go <laughs> win the second one. And that was real. Yeah. You know, that was real. Yeah, I love that. And at that point, I was like, man, it is what it is. My daughter got to see the second Super Bowl. And that was it. Hey, man, get off y'all phones if y'all are not on DraftKings. <sighs> They're doing it again, bro. Any new customer, sign up with the promo code PIVOT, a $5 bet, instantly, $200 bonus bets. 
You know what I was doing, don't you? Y'all know what I was doing. Golly, bro. Same game parlays. I got to get that money, man. I'm telling you, multiple bets in the same game, and you have a chance of winning even bigger prizes. The only way they can win, they got to set up an account on this little device, and then you do like me. You just get to the bread, whether it's DraftKings Sportsbook, DraftKings Daily Fantasy. There's always ways to win money. Go get it. And like Freddie T said, man, get your mobile devices, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, sign up, use the promo code PIVOT, $5 bet, instantly gets you $200 in bonus bets. Back to the show. What happened when, when your pops didn't want to tell, your mom, tell you that your mom went back to work and she was a janitor? I called my dad and then he was like, Yo, your mom want to go back to work. I'm like, yo, for what? <laughs> like, for what? Right. You know what I mean? I take care of everything. With what I with what I have lost, you know what I mean? And you know what I mean? For me to get you where you at here in life today, you want to go back? But that's that's just my mom though. Like every day, like even now, you know, I'm free agent. Right. You know, like I understand the transition. By this, because yo, while this was happening, football was still going on. Mm -hmm. I could have been going crazy, but in reality, is I ain't going crazy because this happened. You know, right now, to this day, I'm still doing things. I'm renovating houses. I got businesses going on, and that keep my mind off things. You know, my mom told me, "Hey, son, you know, you need to chill. Like you always doing something." But that's been me my whole life. You know why? Because I look at my parents oh, yeah. and I see my mom always getting up and going. And then how you gonna tell me that? But you don't stay still. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's in me. You know what I'm saying? It's, this is something that I didn't I didn't learn. It's just in me because it's in y'all. Yeah. You know, and it's in you to this day. I come home, I come home from, you know, a, a season. You know, my mom the type, she do everything on her own. Yo, she went to Home Depot, she had to um, rake up the whole lawn. And you know, I got a big truck at the house. She rent a Home Depot truck <laughs> without, without even consulting me and telling me, hey, can I use your truck? But that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. she ain't chilling, so you can't tell me to chill. I got so much I'm doing that when this happened in the neck, like, it was nothing. It, the transition for me is easy. So. When I do get the call, when I or when I got the call, it's like okay, football wants me. They want my, they want my talent to show these individuals how to do it. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I don't watch film like that. You know what I'm saying? But I can tell you, I've been in this game long enough to know, yo, guys ain't tackling how they used to tackle. Correct. Right. Wow. Guys ain't running how they used to run. Like everything is changing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, what the vets know. You just got to teach it to the young kid. Hopefully they, they understand and grasp it. But, yo, football is changing. Yeah, I see that. The whole it, it, game is changing. Bro, you could, obviously, how you talking, you, you, you believe you can still play ball right now. Oh, for sure. Why, though? You got businesses. You got investments. You got uh, all this stuff. You why? got money. Why? Why? Because, yo, I'm trying to reach the 100 sacks. That's, that's a goal I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not, I haven't been given the opportunity. Last year, I was on the Ravens. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I thought I was going to get that opportunity to get them 100 sacks. But you know what? It didn't fall through like that. You know, business is business. You know, you want the young guys to go out there, just make sure they know how to stop the run. Right. Don't send me out there and play first and second down. I'll do it. But at the time, your third down come through, I'm the type, you know, I'm old school, man. So it's going to take me, I'm, I'm, it's going to take me to get warmed up for nobody to stop me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What's like it going? It ain't, oh, it's like this. Ain't no stopping me. And that's the same thing when it came to my hand. You no, know, once I did this, it ain't no stopping me because, yo, I done been through too much for a person to tell me what I can't do. Yeah. So I'm reaching for that 100 sacks. You know what I mean? Hopefully, one day I am a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Who done did what I did? Who done been through what you've been through? Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I'm getting at. So you have two rings. Two. Could have had a third one. Two rings. Well, I got two rings. But let's talk about the two, yeah. right? Uh, one versus Tom Brady. Uh-huh. He and, played and the, the Bats. Goats. Yeah. And then another with Tom Brady. Uh-huh. What, what, which is the most special, beating Tom or winning one All with right, Tom? Let's go. <laughs> I say winning one with him. 
beat him, yo, I'm his enemy. I'm, you know, that, that's something. I'm his enemy. And, yo, we just playing football. Yo, if your team don't like somebody, and we don't like them. Right. That's just how it is. You know, they the ops. That's how it is. But, yo, beating Tom Brady my second year for a Super Bowl, Yo, I ain't really too much understand what Super Bowl was. I, I ain't even win a college bowl game. Well, I did in junior college, but I didn't even know what that was about. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But winning the Super Bowl and didn't quite understand what a Super Bowl was, all I just know we get a rain and everybody looks up to you. Right. You know? But yo, it took me 10 years, 10 years just to get back to that position. You know, I'm thinking, oh, we won the Super Bowl. Oh, we going right back. Coming. We come right back. <laughs> Same yeah. team. But every year the team is different. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I did that's something I quite didn't understand, you know? And winning one with Tom Brady was totally different because, yo, you talk about the GOAT. You know, I watched him come to work, you know, at 6 a.m. You know, he I'm I'm coming in at 6 a.m. You know, his car already there. He's a team captain. He ain't parking in the captain, team captain. He parking in the back by the where the where the big trucks come in and you know the equipments come in the, with water. I'm parking in the captain spot. And I ain't the captain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm watching him. Right. You know what I mean? See how he carry himself. And yo, he came to work way before everybody. And then practice come. He ain't complaining. He's just doing. Even though this is Tom Brady now, he right. got well, six rings at the time. Uh, yeah. Yo, he didn't complain once. He get hurt, you know what I'm saying? He got his man there working on him, still going to play. He looking at the teammates, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, you can tell the guys look up to him, but he don't say much until it's time to play. And I'll tell you this, winning one with him was special because, yo, I remember this. He didn't say nothing all year, you know what I'm saying? And I'm the type, I, I ain't the type of dude that's going to ra rowdy everybody up, get them all hyped up. You're going to see how I play. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, man, he going all out. I can't be half-assing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then he's going to make me look bad on the defense. You know, if I'm right. running and he's running full speed, and yeah, he's older. You know what I'm saying? But Tom Brady did a speech. I can't, you know, re-quote the speech or nothing. I just know, yo, when he said that speech, I say you want he said, man, I already won a Super Bowl against you, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? But when he said that speech, he was like, bro, one day he said, you win, you win this today, you're going to remember this for the rest of your life. The rest of your life. You know what I mean? And I'm going to be your brother for the rest of your life. You can come to me anytime, anybody in here. You know, it wasn't just about him. It was just the whole team. Like, you could just... Feel it, which I already knew was gonna win. You know what I'm saying? The defense was too raw. You know what I'm saying? Was. We was ready because they beat us way before. But when he made that speech, yo, the nobody had to say nothing no more. We just went out and played. You played that game in Tampa. It which was there was a home team. Yep, Kansas and it, City. And it was a, a tough year for everybody though. COVID. That's, that that's COVID mm -hmm. year. What was was that year like? Tom comes in. You have all these high hopes. But football was so different for mm -hmm. everybody. There were people who said y'all shouldn't even be playing football. It was mm -hmm. people talking about vaccinations. There was all this stuff surrounding that season. And I remember that year, bro, the Saints blew y'all out in Tampa mm -hmm. going into the playoffs. What was that playoff run like? You got rolling. Shaq got rolling. Devin started balling. Y'all was balling on the back end. Mm -hmm. What was that playoff run like for y'all? Yo, I ain't never lose a playoff game until last year, you know what I'm saying? That was the first playoff game I lost. When we got rolling as a team, not just the defense, as a team, because COVID was still in, we got to come in, even with y'all, you got to come in, take the test, swab. Before they was doing like small swab, they was going all deep down your nose. Some guys ain't like that, you know what I mean? I know I ain't like it, deep down your nose. And we just all gather up and it was like, yo, is this what we got to go through? Because we know the Super Bowl is in Tampa. What more do you need to know, you know? Now, obviously, we know guys are going to catch COVID. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying, they do, and they get back in it, you know, because COVID was real. And it's still COVID now, but people don't think about it like that. It's still COVID right. now. But we made sure that we gathered everybody 
and made sure that, yo, real team in the Super Bowl is here this year. The whole time, I'm like, man, we going to see that? Hey, we're going to be we gonna be there. Bro, I was saying that the whole year. We're going to be there. Trust me. And when Kansas City came into town, bro, and we lost that game, you know, I made them lose that game. But like I say, football has changed now. You hit the person in the helmet yep. like this, mm -hmm. it's rough in the past. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, my hand hurt. He ain't hurt, but it, it is what it is. But when we beat them, and I was screaming, yo, we're going to beat them, bro. If that's the championship team that was out there last year, we're going to see them again. And sure enough, we saw them again. But it took everybody, bro. COVID, people got COVID. You know what I mean? Had to sit out. You know, games with stars didn't play. But when you got this, and everybody know, you know, it is what it is. You playing for your brother next to you, and no matter what, I got your back. That's basically what it was. A lot of teams, yo, they start off the year by, oh, you know, we're going to create a team, you know. I don't play video games. Well, you create a team or whatever, however you do it on a video game, and you think your team going to be the, the rawest one, mm -hmm. right? But that ain't how the game go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got to actually interact with your brothers. You know what I mean? Like, I can't come to work, and you sitting next to me every day, and I don't say a don't word to you. Up. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know nothing about you. I don't know if you got kids, got family. But with that year, yo, we made it known, like, even we had new guys, we made it known, like, yo, let's, you know, interact and bond with each other and see, you know what I mean, where we could go, which I already know where we were going to go. But that was this. Nobody could break that bond. And, like, yo, somebody gets sick, we got you. What you need. No, 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 we'll take care of it. And that was basically it. And that's how you win a that's how you win a Super Bowl. Bro, you talk about winning Super Bowls with two different teams. Mm -hmm. And part of your story is too, you went to two small colleges before yeah. you got College of the Canyons and Fort Scott Community and so College. You said, oh and, and you didn't like the first one, right? <laughs> and they did and they called A B Daddy or something like that. Oh, A B Daddy A B Daddy was the at Fort Scott at, Community yeah. College. You know what I mean? Tell me a little like, bit about that. Yo, okay, yo, I could go on by that. <laughs> so I went to junior college, you know what I mean, from high school, and I was at College of the Canyons, you know. I ain't know too much about football. At this point, you know, I started 11th grade year. It was like, yo, what? My coach, Coach Taylor, because I think Coach Minnis wound up, who caught me at my car and said, dragged me to the football field. He wound up leaving and going to Atlanta and getting a head coach job. So only Coach Martin was there. Yeah. So the year in, you know, we go all the way to state my 11th grade year and lose in Miami. Mm. Yep. The following year come back, think we're going to do the same thing. No. You know what I mean? God's gone. Like I said, that's super boy. God's gone. We ain't want to make the playoffs. But then Coach Taylor, who was my head coach, says, hey, uh, do you want to continue playing football. So at this point, my friends gone. You know, they gone off to college. I'm just sitting around, okay, if I'm gonna get a job or what. So I say, you know what, why not? Is it gonna pay for school and all that? So I say, right, I'll do it. You know, not know what I'm getting myself into. Yo, I don't, I don't think I've been out the, I've been out of Florida, you know, except that one time. You know, I flew to Haiti a couple of times, but yo, going to California, you know, I ain't know the time difference, <laughs> none of that. So when I reach, I'm thinking it's still 6 o'clock here. 6 o'clock, it's three hours. Right, you know right. what I mean? Back. Like, yo, that was the breaking point for me. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. That broke me down. Really? You know what I mean? Because knowing that, you know, it's, I ain't get to speak to my mom, like, and my, my pops and my family, like, on a regular basis. Because in junior college, believe it or not, you know, junior college is way, way harder than going to a four-year university. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was at College of the Canyons, you know, you know, shout out to them boys over there for giving me the opportunity. But, yo, it was a struggle for me over there because I was really by myself. This is my first time out, the, out, of, out of Florida, went to uh, California, don't know nothing about California, don't know nobody there but teammates. Teammates ain't really messing with you. So, you know, I'm going to do what I normally do, you know, get it on my own, you know. So they paid for school tuition for me and all that, yo. But some way, somehow I couldn't, I ain't got nothing to say bad about the school, but some way, somehow I couldn't get the, I couldn't get the class. <laughs> you know what I mean? When practice come around, I'm, I'm, I'm going to practice. 
Well, when it comes school time, I, I went and get in the class. <laughs> you couldn't make it? I couldn't make it. He didn't know where it was. No, no, it was. I, I could make it, but I went and get in the ride. Right. Well, you <laughs> know, I wasn't yeah. getting, nobody was coming to pick me up, but when practice came, it was like, oh, I got a ride out front. Uh, you know? Oh, okay, I got you. If I don't go to class or nobody taking me to class, I don't got no car, and I'm and we ain't got dorms in California. You, they renting houses out for you. Yeah. And California is a very dangerous place. Even now, it's even worse now. Yeah. You know, it's a very dangerous place. Back then, it was dangerous. You know. And yo, I didn't make it to class. Sometimes they came and picked me up when I got to that mode. Like yo, you know what? I ain't going to practice. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stay here. I ain't going to practice. They gonna come knocking, but I ain't going to practice. You know, then that's when they started coming and doing this and that. But guess what? They did that. You know, when you get a little summer break, you go back. Yo, I went back and I stayed in the house. And my mom wanted me to go back. My dad was like, oh, when do you go back? I was like, oh, we are in two weeks. But in reality, I ain't going back up there. <laughs> you know, then it got to a point, my mom and dad started to realize, yo, why ain't he leave yet? And I was like, you know what? Forget it, I'm going back. You know, because they didn't gonna start questioning me and all that. So I went back. They was calling me, hey, you know, why are you late? Like, you know. So I went back. They got me a flight, went back. Now I know what to expect. I ain't coming back unless y'all get me my own place. Da da da. They wind up doing that. You know, obviously, if you very good on the team and you and Drew Carr, they're gonna make sure you take care of it. Right. They wind up doing that. And I had one roommate, yo, in a two, no, in a three bedroom house, right? So he got a room, I got a room. Yo, I kid you not. If everything was going all good, you know, all good for like, I'll say a month or two, then they start moving motherfuckers in. <laughs> like, yo, four guys show up. We in a three bedroom, four more guys show up, yo. You know, couldn't keep the refrigerator stock, all that. So that's Julia College, like, so you know what, I got enough of it. Ah, uh, you know what, I ain't gonna play, da da da. But you can't go nowhere else in California. I don't know if y'all know them rules. Yeah, you if can. you're in California, you cannot play junior college ball in a California in California State, anywhere in California. So at this point, I don't know how I wanna reach into Antonio's dad, yeah. you know, Mr. Brown at the time. I guess he heard, yo, you know, somebody trying to get out of it and he, you know, junior college. Now, opportunity came up, yo. Four, it was six of us in the house. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just leave. I'm gonna just leave. I said, I ain't gotta wait a year to play football. Nah, man, you know what? If you come up here, we got dorm. I'm going off what he's saying. I told your dad, yo, we got dorm rooms. You know what I mean? You gonna make it to school, because school five minutes, you can walk to school. I said, oh, yeah? All right, cool. Got dorms? Cool. So I wound up, you know, at night, wind up getting the cab, <laughs> hit it. <laughs> Nobody heard not one word, <laughs> hit it on the plane to Kansas City. Now, at this point, I don't know what I'm getting myself into again. Right. They're like, you going to Dorothy? I'm like, who's Dorothy? Like, you know what I mean? That's what they call it, Kansas City. Yeah. Yo. No place like home. The snow killed me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't know anything about the snow, warm weather, and all. when the snow got there, it killed me. But everything they said they was going to do, they wind up doing. Uh, and then I wind up getting in a fight with my teammates. Teammates? Teammates. You got jumped? Jump ain't the word. Hey, them guys from Cleveland, Ohio, don't play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being real. They don't play. They got this tattoo, like, you know what I mean? They don't play. But it wasn't my fault, you know what I mean? Everything I had to go through to get to U.S. self, don't get me wrong, U.S. self, Going through junior college from College of the Canyons to Fort Scott, and Fort Scott actually treated me good in, in, in College of the Canyons, but what they said they was gonna do, they did. Now nah, they probably changed it and right. everything is more better, but at that time it wasn't like that for me, you know what I'm saying? So I wound up, you know, getting jumped. They wound up sending us everybody home that got jumped. Even though I was the victim, everybody gotta go. <laughs> Everybody gotta go. They kid, everybody gotta go, got cut on the eye. Everybody gotta go, even you the victim gotta go. Yeah. All right, cool, I wound up going home, wound up taking classes online and, and passing it. And then uh, two weeks, uh, USF had a game in two weeks and I wound up making um, the semester because you had to, you know how you gotta apply and get in and all that. I wound up applying and got in. And that's thing you know, I had to wait like 
three weeks to play. And it wound up playing, but they ain't starved me or anything until somebody got hurt. And, but I done been through so much in junior college. Yo, they gave me like a little uh, a badge, you know, in, in college. Yo, it had, it had money on it. It had, you could go get the food, pizza, <laughs> yeah. all that. In yeah. junior college, we didn't have all that. Yeah. So that was easy. Going to class was easy. So once I got in there, it was just a piece of camera. Like, yo, this is what a four year university goes through. Yeah. Like, if I'd have came here before that, maybe I wouldn't have had all the intelligence that I had going through junior college, but yo, I'd have been out of here. Mm -hmm. Like, people would have been knew who I was way before, because I had the option of going anywhere out of college, you know what I'm saying? Not out of college, but out of high school, you know what I'm saying? But so and so, that ain't happy for me. I had to go a different route, you know what I mean? But once I got to the four year university, USF, you know, it was too easy for me. Cause I've been through so much. That's how you so went much. first round. I didn't even know what first round was. Tracy in here should tell you. Through that. <laughs> through that. <laughs> yeah, ain't know nothing. Super Bowl. Yeah. First I ain't round. Know, round. I ain't know that, what first round was. Through that whole path, when did you know you was good at football? Cause you couldn't think it College of the Canyons. You know, I don't know what the fuck y'all are saying. I didn't know I was good. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, College of the Canyons, they gave me, I was already good, but I didn't know how good I was. You know, I was still learning. Right. 11 great years when I like really started playing. Playoff year, cause one of the one of my boys who we was best friend got the same birthday and everything. He was like, he was, you know, we got some of the guys too big, too cool. I'm the starter type. That was him. And they wound up cutting him off the team. He was like, come on, Jason. I was like, uh, nah, I'm going to stay on the team. <laughs> I'm gonna that's what, you know, that's what happened. And I wound up playing, starting a position, and wound up being good. But when I got to college, like, Kenya, it was totally different. You playing like, against other dudes, you know what I mean, other players that's bigger than you and stronger than you. And I won a rookie of the year, whatever. I got a plaque at the house. You know what I mean? My mama got it, you know. Best player in, in the, on the whole team, you know? But at that point, I'm thinking a trophy is a trophy, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I put it, I gave it to my mama. But I really understood I was, got good when I got into the NFL. So it wasn't when they drafted you? You messed around and nah, went first round. When I got drafted, I ain't know anything about draft. You can ask Tracy, bro. I went to it's Leo. People like, it's, it's people like you that really Tim, pissed me off. Uh, Tim uh, Anderson. Uh, yeah, <laughs> man, you know what I'm saying? Like, Tim nah. Anderson said the same thing. Baseball player. Yeah. He was like, man, I'm just playing ball. Nah, you can get first ball. round, man. <laughs> but even in first round, I didn't know what it was. But, you know, I was at Liv because, obviously, I couldn't go to the draft because they had this stupid, real, uh, this stupid rule. If you got a felony on your um, record, you can't go. But you know how I got that felony on my record? From College of the Canyons. Super Bowl weekend, Patriots against Eagles. You remember that Super Bowl? Mm -hmm. I ain't even watch Super Bowl. They got a party at the house. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to go pay my T-Mobile prepaid bill. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To make sure my phone get, don't, don't get cut off. So I used one of my teammates' car that, you know, he had a, a, a charger. You know what I mean? Yo, he coming to coming to practice with it. I'm like, he got a car, coming to practice with it, letting everybody hold it on the team. I just so happened to hold it on Super Bowl weekend. You know, because everybody at the house said, can I hold your phone, um, your car, to go pay my bill, prepaid bill, to go to the mall. So I'm going to the mall. You know, me and my two roommates that was in the house, they rode with me, right? All right, cool. That's, you know, I'm driving. I see a police about to, right? I got stories, bro. I see a police about to bust a left, you know what I mean? But he's in the left turn, so you you the left turn, and I'm already making the right to, to go. So I said, oh, police, all right. So I made the right anyway, because I'm going to school up the block right here. So next thing you know, I'm driving. Yo, I see a roadblock. I said, hey, y'all boys, it's a roadblock. It's a roadblock up front. All right, cool, I'm gonna just go through the school. The campus and go around with a team over. Yo, turn, bust that left into the school. Helicopters. You got laser pointed at the car, all that. Cops, you know, stop the car. At this point, I'm shaking. I don't know what I did. I ain't do no, like, what did I do? Like, you know, for police to be surrounding me. Yo, come to find out, yo, the car was stolen from the airport. And I so happened to be driving it. Wow. Dang. Man. You know, so that's the only reason I didn't go to the draft. I would have loved to go to the draft. You know, that, sh that shit look lit over there. Everybody, you know what I mean? Get number one, you number one jersey with your name. I ain't got none, I ain't got none of that. 
<laughs> to this day, I still ain't got the number one. Like, what's up with that? Roger Goodell, like, what's up? Can I get that? So, but I didn't have none of that. So I couldn't go to the draft. They wound up shooting it at, they wound up doing it at Liv. Yep. And, you know, Drew Rosenhaus was my agent at the time. You know what I'm saying? Didn't know too much about agents at the time, too. Drew, you know Drew. Yeah, yeah. You know, hey, bud, you know, all that with Jason Cass and them. Yo, first round, I don't even know what round I was going. You know, you do the little uh, thing we got to fill in and send it in. They already said I was going first round, but they don't know. You know, it could be on the back end. At one point, they said I was going number three. I don't know what number three is. But Sue went number two or whatever, and Cam knew whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? But I didn't know nothing. So I'm in Liv, dressed up, you know, I'm, I'm coming, I'm thinking, okay, it's gonna, yo, this is my first time in Liv. <laughs> yeah, this shit is nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it looked like you was at the draft, yeah. the way they set it up. Yeah. So we get in there, you know, I'm sitting, blah, blah, blah. 15 pick, I went, you know, everybody in the, in, everybody that was in the, uh, in Liv went crazy. I'm talking with stupid crazy. I ain't know what's going on. I don't know everybody no, you got the pitch like this. Huh? Ain't no way. Bro. I'm telling you, no, yes, there, wait. There, there is there is no way you get picked 15. 15. Everybody in there's there, Listen, I knew I, I, I knew I something was going on. I knew something was going on because Did your phone ring? No, you know what? My phone didn't ring. I'm a type of person that if you got my number, you got my number. But everybody going crazy and look, Trace will tell you right now, when you walk out of here, Axel. Everybody doing this. You know, my parents don't know what the heck going on. You know what I mean? Because we hasted it. Like, we don't know nothing. But you know how I knew I made it? You know, MySpace mm. and Facebook, yo, I had, like, maybe 150 friends. Yo, <laughs> by the time I got home, my, my two homeboys oh was God. too excited. They was way excited. We, we rolled home with the top of the Mustang let back. And he'll never let the top of the Mustang back. Wind blowing. <laughs> But when I got home, bro, I had 100-something friends on Facebook, 100-something friends on MySpace. That's when it was hot. Yo, I must have had like 40,000 people. <laughs> I accepted them all. <laughs> and that's when I knew something was different, you know what I mean? But other than that, I ain't know nothing. Hey, Freddie T had you know? Black Planet. <laughs> Black Planet was lit. I'll check it. No, so, uh, you know, in spite of, or despite, you know, everything from, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what is it, Canyon College? The College of the Canyon. Co College of the Canyon mm -hmm. to going to see Dorothy, the mm -hmm. felony. Yes. Uh, you know, with the adverse moments, with the hand, the neck. Uh, as we sit here today, you're a free agent. You're 52 all time on the uh, uh, top sacks list, sack leaders list. Mm -hmm. Uh, five and a half away from 100. I know that's a goal of yours. For sure. Uh, two away from passing Hall of Famer and Warren Sapp. Oh, wow. You know, even with all of that, mm -hmm. right? In your words, and we always ask our guests this, what has been your biggest pivot? That one moment or that defining moment that speaks to who you are and what you've gone through or that moment that changed everything for you in life? I think blowing off my hand, man. Blowing off hand made me realize who I was capable of, of being and what I am. Because at the end of the day, I could sit here and talk with y'all, but at the same thing, I still got this, right? So when people meet me, they don't know. Mm -hmm. I give them a, it's like it's the same thing. But if you do know about my situation, if I give you five, right? Mm -hmm. This is how somebody will reach over and give me five. I'm like, yo, what the hell you doing? Oh. Why? Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm still the same person. Right. Just because my hand blew up doesn't define, like, yo, I'm going to change, or that's not me, or I'm not going to be the same person. I'm the same person from when my hand blew up, I act the same, but only difference is I know who I am as a person. Like, can't nobody make jokes around me, and I'm not going to joke back. Like, I'm still that character person mm -hmm. in real life. I know for a fact that no matter what the like, circumstances is, I'm helping people around the world. You know what I'm saying? Not about physically meeting them, but like if you know my story, you know. It's, no, it's nothing to be said. You know, this dude is a savage. Mm -hmm. you like, know I think I mean? the thing is, you know, like 
other people try to put themselves in your position. Mm -hmm. You persevered through all this. You feel like you've seen worse than what you've even gone sure. through. But for people who haven't, it makes them uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. like, like they can't even understand how you are so comfortable. They can't understand what you've been through, how you've gotten through it, and where you are now. And I think for them, it's not that they, they don't know how you're going to be. They mm -hmm. just don't know how to be. And I think in getting to talk to you, man, and seeing your spirit, like when people are around you, the reason you affect them is not because of what's on the outside. Right. It's because of who you are on the inside. Right. And that's your parents coming here in 1983. That's your mm -hmm. father being who he's always been. Your yeah. mom. For sure. Still wanting to work, man. So we just appreciate your time, bro. Man, I appreciate y'all. We hope you get me. back out too, man. We hope yeah, you get back sure. out and do your no, thing. No, Jack's Mill can use the help. Five and a half. You think he's going to get five and a half? Yeah, he can get five and a half. Hey, hey bro. I should have asked the Juco <laughs> question <laughs> way <laughs> earlier. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the Juco, hey, he got hot about that Juco. He was like, my dog said. Oh, that hit a trigger. Yeah, my dog said, damn, college of the kid. They put four people in there. Four, man, there's four in the world, bro. Hold up. Limitless. Niggas to me, guy pinning it. I find the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Niggas to me, guy pinning it. I find the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up.